Date someone who's normal. Not my type. Fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today's story is one that's bound to spark some conversation. Woman shocked that her man didn't wait for her after she went on a girl's trip. We'll unpack the story, talk about relationship expectations, and look at why this outcome might not be as surprising as it seems. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more stories like this. Let's dive in. Just a, as an update, guys, because before where, we, where I left off, we filmed the day before we flew for the Hindu and Bodrum. And I don't know if you guys remember, like, I'm sure you do, but it was like four days before that, that me and him like had broken up and I'd said it's over because I mentioned the whole engagement thing and he said next year. And then there was like a whole four days where he could have like really put the effort in to kind of show me that, you know, he wants to work things out and, you know, he wants to make changes, but instead he did the opposite. He didn't prove it to me at all. And remember, I, I was really upset before going. I was crying and I and I said, guys, I've blocked him because it's hard for me to just wait to see if he messages and stuff. So that day when we filmed the podcast, it was the day before our flight. When I got back home, he did turn up at, in in the evening at night. And basically, we both spoke. We were both very emotional. Um, but basically, cut a long story short, I found out that he had said some negative things about me to his friends which I just didn't understand because like I never actually did anything to him. I never swore at him, never sh shouted at him. Like I literally was a girl asking him, let's prepare for the future. Yeah. Like let's be serious and you know, I don't want to settle for less. I don't want to wait longer because I don't feel like I should. Yeah. And like he's basically like about you to his mates. Yeah. But which he's, is smart. He's kind of like in a sense of like, She's because in his head, he's the victim and she's left him. And he thinks that like she's done him wrong when really like that's not the case. Yeah. She just wants, look, let's take this relationship to the next level. Let's yes. plan for the future. Let's plan for the prove future. Prove to me that you, you're, you're able. Prove to me that you want me enough. And like, I don't think it's even just about like an engagement. I feel like there's so much there's more. There's so much more to it. There's so much more I've to it. I've said it before because obviously I compromise, I feel like so much in this relationship, you know, and there's so like guys, there's so much more. And like just the fact that he showered at me, I don't want someone that will shout and swear at me. Yeah. I want someone that's patient and kind and will sit with me and talk to me and try and work things out and think yeah. of a solution and compromise. I feel like it's only me compromising in this relationship and there was no him compromising. And for me, there's just no more compromising. Waiting another year is not compromising. But also at the same time, like I'm not saying get me a ring now or it's over. Yeah. I never said that because like I never said get me a ring now it's over. I just wanted some kind of reassurance that no, it's not going to be in a year. I'm working towards it. But I'm it. working towards it and it's going to happen soon. Yeah. Not now or it's over. That's not what I wanted. I just want someone that's like really patient and kind and like wants to work wants to work things out wants to fight for me wants to fight for our relationship and guys when i did all this like obviously before i left i when i found out he was talking about me negatively to his friends that tipped me over the edge and that was like for me that was like okay i'm done like i blocked him and i went on this head and do and like it was a big mistake for me to do because while i was obviously I don't want to be around my friends. She's getting married and I want to be like crying and stuff, like going through a breakup when she's on her hen When she's on her hen do, like that would be so selfish. So I had to put on like a front, you know, that that whole over a week. Yeah, I had to put on a front, which was really difficult to do. Imagine, imagine you're going through so much emotions. Yeah. And like you have to put on a front. So let's get this straight. She's pushing him for an engagement ring, right? She's making it clear she wants that commitment, a ring on her finger. But then, she's also planning a girl's trip. And when he says he's waiting until next year to get her the ring, she gets upset and blocks him immediately. This kind of instant reaction tells you a lot about where her priorities really are. Here's the thing. If a ring and commitment were truly what she wanted, why would she be so quick to block him over a slight delay? Most people, when they're serious about building a future together, no things take time, especially with big commitments. But the moment he says, let's wait until next year, she's out without even a conversation about it. And what does that say about the commitment she's claiming to want? Was the ring more about showing off than actually investing in their relationship? Blocking him like that is a huge red flag. 
It's not how you treat someone you're genuinely looking to spend your life with. It's about finding someone who sees a relationship as a partnership, not a one-sided deal where she calls all the shots and bails the moment things don't go exactly as planned. This guy is better off knowing her true colors now than later. If she's more focused on the timeline of getting what she wants rather than understanding the big picture, she's probably not looking for a genuine, lasting partnership. It sounds like he dodged a bullet. So it's like, in a way, like I was so unhappy because I was compromising on so many things, like his work and other things that I don't need to go into. But I was compromising on so many things. And then plus when this engagement thing came up, like I just thought it's another thing that I have to compromise on. I don't want to, yeah? I'm unhappy. So I ended it in a way of like, I was hoping in the back of my head that he will come back and yeah. be like, my, I love you so much that let's work this out. Let's like try and work things out so you don't have to compromise so much. I want to be a, a better, better man, better man for you. You know, that's love, right? Yeah, like I, I thought he was going to be the airport with a bouquet of flowers. I thought he was going to turn up with my mom's of flowers on the first day we got back because he knows obviously every step Anna's taking and her whereabouts through Gingerbread, right? Because I'm with Gingerbread. So I really thought that he would turn up. I mean, we all thought, I mean, Anna thought it, my friends I thought really it. I really thought like, the love that he had for me, like, was so much and so strong that he would fight for me. And put his pride and ego aside. Yeah, so when I actually, Mandy, walked out of that airport, I, no one knows this, but I was looking around for him. I know. And I thought he was going to be there. I know. And I thought he was going to be like, Anna, because... I wasn't on some guys. I was not on some wild holiday. I literally went out once. Yeah, the whole time went we out there. Once. Um, like I, it was more of a, like a relaxing. Yeah, because it's my friend that's getting married. She doesn't even drink alcohol, so it wasn't even that kind of vibe. And the rest of us are in like really serious relationships. It's not that vibe. And like I, I thought like before I went as well. You know, he even said like take this time to to relax and think about us. And and he and he did say, I'm going to fight for you. And I'm not going to give up on you. And I'm not going to give up on you. And I genuinely thought he wouldn't. I thought he's going to come back with some changes. Yeah. And like, we're going to work it out. It's but so when I mad. walked out of that and I saw he wasn't there. I was so mad because Anna, I thought the exact same thing, but I didn't tell you because I'm not going to say, oh, I think he's going to be at the airport because I don't want to say that to my sister and put that, give her hope. And then if he's not there, she's going to she's gonna so be broken already, even more but then i thought okay he's not at the airport he's definitely gonna come tonight yeah. yeah and he didn't he didn't turn up guys my mom's place is two minutes down the road two minutes two minutes like literally a five minute walk two minutes in the car i thought he's gonna come and and you know fight for me yeah and he didn't guys and like it's been now three days since we're back since we're back and he has not come he's not yeah he's blocked who gives it like I'm, you tipped me over the edge. Like I'm, you've literally made me look stupid in front of people by the things that you're saying about me. Yeah, and and you've not come and fought for me. And you know what? Today I woke up. I was upset, but I was kind of upset because I came to the realization that he's just proved that I was right in ending things. Yeah, Do you see what I mean? Like he's never. I don't want to be with someone that I have to question. Whether they love you enough. Whether they love me enough or love me in the right way. way like, yeah. I'm sure he loves me. Yeah, 100%. But I want someone that's going to love me in the right way. I want to feel peace. I yeah. want to feel relaxed. Like, relaxed. I want that. You that's don't want to go through this pain and confusion and uncertainty and like no mental more. torture. It's been the no three more. days we've been back. It's been horrible. I just feel like I've been through so much. I've like given so much love and been through so much the last three and a half years. I'm tired of it. Like, and this and last knows. three days was just it. Like, you just showed me, like, that's it. Like, the whole three and a half years and just everything. Like, this just all makes sense. Like, you just can't love me in the right way. And I feel like I can find someone that will love me in the right yeah, way. Of course you can, Anna. Like, I can find someone that will love me. Like, it's not too late. No. I'm like... It would have been if you carried on and carried on and because... carried on staying in a relationship where you weren't happy anyway. Yeah, but what a shame. Like, what yeah, a shame. He has the... Potential, he has the opportunity and to I, like, make it what work. What a shame that we loved each other so, so much. much. I believe, like, the man, I, I, this is my opinion, a man should be the one that fights for the but woman. A man proves himself, especially when the woman, like, if you've done something really bad and you've done something really wrong, I would say, Anna, you need to, you know what I mean, do something, you need to turn up. When he knows all the problems in his relationship are coming from his side. Yeah, I've not done anything, guys. Yeah, he, you, the only thing you did is block him before a Hindu, which was like a relaxation retreat. But and, yeah. 
And really, like, you got pushed to that. But I didn't even do it right before. If I, like, blocked him hours before going, I understand. Yeah, it happened, like, four days, days before. before. And really, it actually started a whole week before with the whole fertility thing. Like, yeah. So it actually started way before. I mean, I completely get it if it was just the night before. Blocked yeah. By, it wasn't. It was, like, four whole days. Yeah. And it, conversation was going on for a whole like two weeks before yeah. it. do you get what i'm saying it wasn't so a shock it wasn't a, sh a shock yeah so like he knows that like okay i've got a really amazing woman like she's got so many great qualities she's right i she's, love him she's so rode much out for me on like hard hard times i've had in my life like on my bad times my good times she's been there like all the problems in the relationship are coming from from me really okay maybe she had enough maybe she's given up and she's blocked me let me fight let me change her mind yeah like, the ego is the enemy of love. But yeah, I'm telling you. All right, let's break this down. She ends things, blocks him, and heads off on her girl's trip, expecting him to just be there at the airport, ready to welcome her back like nothing happened. Now, that's not just a little bit entitled. That's a whole new level of it. She's out here ending the relationship, going on vacation to find herself, or whatever the story might be, then expects him to chase her down. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. He respected her decision and let her go. She said she was unhappy, right? So, he stepped back to let her do her thing. But somehow that wasn't enough. Now, she's back, tearful and all. Not understanding why he isn't just standing there, waiting for her with open arms. It's like she wants to call all the shots, end things, go on her trip, block him, and then have him at her feet when she's back, as if he's supposed to be grateful for the privilege of being in her life. Here's the kicker. Now she's playing the victim, as if somehow he's the one who's done something wrong by not putting himself on standby. But honestly, he's doing exactly what he should do, keeping his self-respect intact. When someone tells you they're unhappy and wants space, you give them that, right? So, it's a little rich to expect him to then fight for her after she's set all these boundaries and rules on her terms. This kind of behavior is a clear mismatch between words and actions. She wanted independence. She got it. But now she wants to rewrite the ending when things didn't play out how she expected. And here's the truth. He's in the right to keep his boundaries and walk away with his dignity. Modern day women just don't qualify for the top tier men and that is the truth. Do you believe you're a top tier man? By what standard? I'm six foot four. Only about, what, 8% of the entire world is six foot four. I make well over 100... 100k a year and i'm black at that if you add that on mm. so just if you're speaking about those figures the things that women are attracted to mm -hmm. uh, i'm not going to toot my own horn but i'll let you do the math Hold <laughs> on, before we go what's your math saying the conversation and the words that are coming out of the mouth of someone like you i would never consider top tier a top tier man mm -hmm. is also a man that is extremely desirable by way of his character a top tier man is a man who displays a certain level of intellect that allows him to consider other people. A top tier man, um, they lead with love, not with dictatorship, okay. right? They don't want to control their woman. They want to gently lead their woman. A top tier man creates space for a woman to feel good about herself. A top tier man supports the dreams and the ideas of a woman, a top tier man prioritizes a woman. A top tier man is in leadership and working as hard as he is to give the woman the life of her dream. Oh. And with but all that stuff that you just said, that was just woman needs talk. That. Woman needs is look, also look, six four, look, black, attractive. Look, look, I don't what, know too many like, women in my circle like who what? desire a six four man still wearing braids. Here's the thing: she's describing top tier men by her standards, listing all the traits she wants her guy to have. And yes, in her mind, a top-tier man checks every single one of her boxes, from personality to looks to finances and beyond. But here's the reality check. Describing her ideal doesn't magically make that guy appear or guarantee he's looking for her in return. She wants a man who's driven, stable, loyal, attractive, ambitious. All these qualities that everyone would want in a partner. But often... What's overlooked is that those very same top-tier men are also looking for qualities in their partners, and it might not line up with her vision of what makes her desirable. The reality is, a relationship isn't just about finding someone who checks your boxes. It's about mutual compatibility and bringing something of value to each other's lives. So sure, she has a clear image of what she wants, but the question is, 
Does she fit the bill for what that high-value man is looking for too? Or is she so focused on listing requirements that she's forgetting to consider what she brings to the table? It's easy to paint a picture of the ideal partner, but in the end, the most successful relationships are built when both people are focused on what they can build together, rather than just on what the other person can give. I'm going to trigger you for a minute, but bear with me. I will get to my point. You can yell at me in the comment section later on. Can we stop collectively as women calling every woman we see, especially on the internet, stunning, beauty goddess, flawless, perfect? Can we stop doing that? The number of videos I see on the internet of women talking about their insecurities, their flaws, things they don't like in their face, in their body. And then you go into the comment section, women all screaming, oh my God, you're literally stunning. Oh my God, I cannot believe my eyes are so gorgeous. You're literally a goddess. Can we stop doing that? No, she's not. No, she's not. She's not perfect. She's not a goddess. She's not flawless. There are flaws. I can name 10 in 10 seconds. She has had years of feedback. She owns a mirror, she knows. You shoving beauty down her throat is not helping her. You're not helping her at all. You're being a hypocrite. Stop doing that. And ask yourself a very, very important question. Why the fuck does she have to be? Why? Why does she need to be stunning? Why does she need to be beautiful? We're mammals. We're supposed to have flaws. We do not come plastic, prepackaged. Why? Show me this invisible contract that we as women had to collectively sign before coming onto this earth. Abiding by the rule that we need to look beautiful. Why? Why does she need to look beautiful? Why does she need to be stunning and flawless? This is my question. Says who? I know. Men. Because we're perceived as objects. And you're perpetuating that thought and that concept. By saying, oh my God, no. You're so beautiful. What if she's not? The fuck you're gonna do? She doesn't owe it to anyone. We don't owe beauty to anyone on this earth. Your proper response would be, I'm not beautiful, I have flaws. These are the things I don't like about myself. And, and, what is going on in here? What major did you study? What are your achievements? What are the things that you're proud of? What can you tell me about yourself? What kind of personality do you have? How many books have you read? What are your thoughts? What are you successful in? What are your passions? What would you like to achieve in this lifetime? What kind of a person do you plan to be in the future? Oh my God, you're stunning? No. She's not stunning and she doesn't need to be. She doesn't have to be. Why is it that in every award show, when a man wins an award or an accolade, he goes up there and the first thing he says is, thank you to my beautiful wife. Why is it not my supportive wife, my smart wife, my ambitious wife, my successful wife? Why are we always reduced down to the way we look? How many women, on the other hand, do you see going up there and saying, thank you to my handsome husband? Never. Never. Why are you helping men in objectifying women? Stop. We don't need to look beautiful. We don't need to look stunning. We don't need to look flawless. We don't fucking owe this to anyone. We can be so many other things. 
when you immediately call women who are insecure about themselves beautiful, you are putting the emphasis on how they must look. Proper response would be, doesn't matter how you look. What are other aspects to you that are important, that need to be praised, that need to be applauded, that need to be considered and cheered on? Stop. Stop helping men. Stop upholding patriarchy. We don't need to be beautiful. We don't. All right, let's get real here. Women don't really have the team they think they do. More often than not, they're in silent competition with each other, sizing each other up, and even sometimes undermining one another for validation or status. And here's the irony. They're aiming this whole game at impressing or outshining other women. It's like the real audience for their looks and lifestyle isn't men but other women. Misery, as they say, loves company. Now, a lot of women believe that men are solely focused on looks. Sure, attraction matters initially, but here's the truth. Most men are not judging women's beauty to the extent that women think they are. The truth is that women's beauty standards and the pressures around them often come from other women. It's other women who fuel the constant chase to look better, be fitter, or have the latest fashion trends. Men generally just don't care about the same things. They're looking for personality, connection, and respect. Yet somehow, women believe that beauty alone is enough to capture a man's loyalty or affection. But a man's interest usually runs deeper than that. A girl called my show today. She had just ended a six-month situationship. The guy had been not treating her right, kind of sketchy behavior. His ex-girlfriend was hovering. And finally today or yesterday, she saw a picture of him and his ex together that she had posted. So easy enough, that's done. And I said, you need to block him. I'm sorry this happened. And she said, yeah, I'm just like, I'm really upset because I have been treated so badly in the past. Like I've been in two other long-term situationships before this. And I just don't know how I'm going to date again. Like how will I stop like being with these guys who treat me like this? And then something went off in my head. Now I would never call on Beyonce's internet and defend a man, obviously. However, however, her saying that she's been in three long-term situationships, you know, six, eight, nine months, a year, it made me feel like it was a self-esteem issue. I'm not saying that all three of those situationships didn't do her dirty and that, again, I'm not defending them, but we accept the treatment that we think we deserve. We accept the treatment that we think we deserve. It's up to you at some point to say, we've been hanging out for six months and you're not committing to me, so I'm out. Or you're not treating me the way I want, so I'm out. Obviously, it's more complicated. But if you are looking at your dating history and you're saying you're seeing three long-term situationships, it's a self-esteem thing. Also, it pains me to say this, but I think my favorite lunch spot fell off. All right, here's the thing. Facing the reality that maybe you're the common denominator, that's hard. Because it's way easier to just say, oh, men are the problem and move on, right? But actually, that approach leaves you spinning in the same patterns, making the same choices, with the same results. See, it's easy to shift the blame, to say, men are immature, or men don't appreciate me, but let's be real. If the same issues keep coming up, who's the one that's always there? You. And it's not a comfortable thought. Real self-reflection requires acknowledging that maybe it's not always the other person. It's looking in the mirror and thinking, what am I bringing to this that keeps landing me here? That's the part that requires real growth, and it isn't always fun. So here's the harsh reality check. The common denominator is not just all men everywhere. It's your choices, your behavior, and the standards you choose to set, or sometimes not set. And here's the upside. When you take responsibility for your part, you finally gain the power to actually change the game. You can shift from playing a passive role to being an active part of creating relationships that actually work. It's time to stop the blame game and start focusing on becoming the kind of partner you want to attract. That's where the real work happens, and that's how real change begins. Well, we could pick better men. Agreed. And that should actually be the focal point of this entire conversation, shouldn't it? 
because it's becoming increasingly apparent as time goes by that a lot of these women, especially the ones that are the most vocal about indicating that all men need to do better, are just projecting the bad experiences that they had in previous relationships onto other men. Because it seems that a lot of these women are just choosing the first man that is single and readily available and made them feel somewhat comfortable and chose to ignore the red flags or chose to overlook them as they slowly emerged throughout the relationship and stayed in that relationship simply because they didn't want to be alone. But men could also just be better men. Am I right? Partially because a person should always strive to be a better person than they were the day before. But the problem is, is that I do not believe that a lot of women actually know what constitutes a good man and probably wouldn't actually recognize one if they saw them. Let's get real for a moment here. So many women see the red flags and just hope they're wrong. Why? Because deep down, they want to believe the best in someone. Or maybe they're convinced they can change the guy. But let's be honest that mindset rarely works out. Ignoring red flags only ends up costing them in the end. It's a classic story. They're drawn to that bad boy energy, the thrill, the mystery. But here's the kicker. When things go south, when the behavior they brushed off as exciting turns into disrespect or inconsistency, they're suddenly blindsided. They feel let down, disappointed, and often end up blaming men in general, rather than recognizing their own pattern of choices. And what's the result? The good guys. The ones who don't play games, who respect boundaries, who actually want a healthy relationship, end up standing on the sidelines, watching this whole cycle unfold. It's no wonder that many genuinely good men are happy just doing their own thing these days. They're tired of being the backup plan after a woman's thrill-seeking phase with the bad boy didn't work out. Until there's a change in perspective, until they're ready to see that stable, Kind men are not boring, but actually the ones who are consistent and reliable, the cycle will continue. And honestly, the good guys aren't interested in being the fallback anymore. Women might need to look inward if they want a lasting, respectful relationship and realize that a healthy relationship starts with healthy choices.